In this video, we're going to take a look at what's kind of a theoretical question, but theoretical questions are important to understand and to help in problem solving, so I think it's worth doing. We're going to be looking at a present value of a deferred annuity, and I'll also describe what a deferred annuity is. We are going to think of that present value in two ways, that's part of the point of the problem, and we're going to confirm it in two ways, that's also part of the point of the problem. Here's the problem statement. Derive this equation that you see right here in two ways. This equation uh, is from the sixth edition of Berberman's book on the mathematics of investment and credit. It's equation 2.8. It's on page 97 in that book. We want to derive this equation in two ways, a by means of a timeline and b by considering the series forms for the present values of these annuities immediate in this equation. By the way, the fact that I'm putting this in parentheses means the in the textbook in this problem they didn't actually put those words in there, but I'm trying to emphasize that these, these a's here are present values as we've seen recently. Note, you can think of this expression most simply as representing the present value of a so-called deferred annuity. What is that? That's where you're, you know, you you can purchase annuities where you're going to get payments in the future based on money you give them right now. Um, you can wait a certain amount of time to receive your payments. It's a very common thing. For example, you can buy an annuity for maybe a fairly low price when you're, say, in your 20s or 30s. That will pay you uh, a consistent amount, consistent amount, maybe a level payment every year for as long as you live, say, starting when you retire maybe age 65, maybe age 70. Okay, so deferred annuities are very common. And this, again, is the most simple way to think of the uh, present value of such an annuity. All right, so let's think about a timeline here, part A. We are at the present here is time zero. And these are, we can imagine, say, one year apart in time. Let's say I purchased the annuity at time zero and I have to wait k years for it to become what we've called an annuity immediate, which now means that I, from this point on, I start getting my payments at the end of every year, starting at time k plus 1. We could also think of it as an annuity due if we wait k plus 1 year, years and find the present value at that moment. But I'm thinking of this in terms of these symbols, which represent annuities immediate. If they were annuity dues, then they'd have double dots above them, and I'm avoiding that at the moment. There's going to be n payments of 1 at times k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 3, etc. If it's n payments, the last payment is going to be at time k plus n. All right, in terms of these a's, these present values of annuities immediate, uh, certainly this expression is the simplest way to think of, I also have it here, is the simplest way to think of the present value of this income stream at time zero. First, take this income stream and pull it back to time k. Since it's n payments, and since we're evaluating the value of this one year before the first payment, this symbol, a sub n, at this moment in time, time k does represent the present value of that at that moment in time. Okay, So therefore, to get back to time 0, I need to discount by multiplying by v to the k power. There are k years in between time 0 and time k when we are initially evaluating the value of this income stream. Giving me, again, the simplest expression, v to the k times a n for the present value at time zero of this deferred annuity. All right, what we want to do into here for the rest of part A is just say, you know, we can think of it as this difference as well. Okay, and it's it's pretty self-evident, and I've, I've been already thinking in this way in many videos that I've where I've emphasized that you can solve problems in two ways, one of which would be through a timeline. If we imagine an annuity immediate starting at time one, and we're going to evaluate the present value of that at time zero, and going up to time k plus n, certainly the present value of all k plus n of those payments at time zero is symbolically, symbolically represented by n, uh, a sub n plus k. But hey, 
we can break this up into two pieces. Uh, we can break it up into the first K payments and the last N payments. And we can say that the present value of the last N payments could be thought of as the present value of all the payments minus the present value of the first K payments. Okay, so it's almost like the equation reveals itself. Um, it's almost like automatic. You might wonder whether you're really thinking of it right, but it is correct. The present value of the first K payments at time zero would be AK. So if I take what's in blue here, this present value for all K plus N payments um, and subtract off the present value of the first K payments, obviously that's going to give you the present value of the last N payments that start at time K plus one, okay? That's not really a proof, but it's a it's a it's an intuitive approach that actuaries use all the time and it is valid. If we approach it with series forms in part B, that would be more of a proof. Okay? That would be an algebraic confirmation of the intuition that we get from thinking about it with the timeline. And I think what I'll do is I'll confirm this equality up here. In terms of a sum, I'm going to add AK to both sides. Let's confirm algebraically that AK plus V to the K times AN equals AN plus K. Based on the algebraic definitions of these things, this by definition is V plus V squared plus V cubed, etc plus v to the k, where v is the present value discount factor. This is for annuity immediate, so the first payment is one year after the start. So v is the present value of the first payment, I'm pulling it back one year. v squared is the present value of the second payment, I'm pulling that payment back two years, etc. v to the k is the present value of the kth payment. This expression right here, in an analogous way, represents v plus v squared plus v cubed plus all the way to v to the n, there are n payments now. If I multiply that by v to the k, multiply all these by v to the k, I add the exponents, I'm going to get v to the k plus 1 plus v to the k plus 2 plus v to the k plus 3, etc. The last one is going to be v to the k plus n. Now combine these two things, add them, and you obviously get this thing. That thing definitely is v plus v squared plus v cubed, etc., all the way over to here with the last term of plus v to the k plus n. We add these two things that are represented symbolically here and here to get this thing. Okay, so that's a bit more of a what you might call a proof of this equality, but the timeline approach, while it's not a proof, is the kind of intuition you want to develop to get good at solving lots of um, problems in financial math, where maybe you don't want to think of bother thinking about the series. You want to try to come up with an equation that will help you solve a problem in kind of the quickest way possible. And oftentimes the timeline approach is the best thing to use.